The Saskatchewan Human Rights Commission has created a pedagogy that answers this question. What does it mean to be a Canadian? What are the rights of citizenship? But also, what are the responsibilities that go with those rights? And how do you build and maintain respect for every citizen? Why? Because every human being deserves equal moral consideration. We call that rights, responsibilities and respect the new three R's. And that is available in elementary education, primary education, and high school education. What we're saying is that you have to know and understand your own rights. That's a fundamental responsibility as a Canadian citizen. Why? So you don't knowingly transgress the rights of others. Secondly, as a Canadian citizen, every citizen has a duty, a responsibility to make the world a better place. That's the way you have to go. That's the standard you have to set. You have to make the world a better place and you have to see the world through that lens. You might not get there, but you have to continually strive to get there. That's what we want to invoke in our young citizens, the new citizens coming up in the school system. And we have to understand a responsibility to implement the treaty relation in a modern context according to the spirit and intent of treaty. And fundamentally, this is all about respecting every citizen. So that's the goal of those resources. What we need to do is to ensure that students understand uh, about privilege, about mar marginalization. We need to see students framing discussion uh, using the diversity wheel. We need to see acts of students in that framework so that they understand that every individual has a different perspective. You have to consider the perspective of other people. And once you consider that perspective, you'll have a better understanding, a better empathy for your fellow citizens. And students in this pedagogy, I think you'll find this of interest, are constantly asked for the First Nations perspective. And that has never happened before in education tools in Canada, in my opinion. And that's very important because it's the first time that students, even at the grade four level, are asked to examine, for instance, on governance issues, not only a federal governance model, provincial, territorial, municipal, but also the First Nations governance models and how that should impact on future decision making. That pedagogy, that large citizenship pedagogy, has implemented in it teaching treaties in the classroom where all treaty people, K to 12, it's all right there. It also has implemented in it the experience in residential schools. So it's very, very important because it is a significant response to the, CR, to the TRC's call for action on education. It's a very significant response. What we want to produce at the end of this education in 12 years of schooling is this. We're going to produce what I call five E's. We're going to produce an enlightened citizen, an empowered citizen, an empathetic citizen, an ethical citizen, and an engaged citizen. The five E's. That's the goal. So I've been asked a number of times, well, why is there such an emphasis required on citizenship education? Why do we need to study the three R's? Why do we have to have embedded the five E's? And fundamentally, I say it's important to educate our children about their rights. They need to fully understand that they are not citizens in waiting. They are citizens right now. And they have, with those rights, benefits and responsibilities that go with their citizenship, even at a very young age. Why? Because knowledge is linked to freedom. And the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. But one cannot be vigilant unless you have knowledge. And that's where teachers come in. Also embedded in this pedagogy is what I call the six big social context issues. And I want to outline what those issues are. We start with the Holocaust and the world's response to the Holocaust. And what we see there is a building of the rights revolution knowing those rights. So that sets a whole context because in the post-Second World War period, after 1948, human rights really started to be embedded in the social context of the Western world. So the Holocaust is where we start. Then we want to engender respect for different races. So we're going to deal head-on with racism as a second social context. We're going to deal head-on with gender discrimination 
as the third. The fourth area of the work is going to build respect for Aboriginal spirituality and, and culture and the contributions that Indigenous people have made to Canada and to the world. The fifth area of social context is to understand mental health and addictions. And the sixth area is to understand disability issues. And what we're trying to do then is to create that enlightened student, that ethical student, that empowered student, and that empathetic student. And we're doing that by addressing these critical social context issues right in the school system before students graduate from grade 12. So they'll be armed with a different set of knowledge and an understanding of the world. At the heart of this, we're all required to know our rights. We're all required to understand the rights of others. We're all required to act responsibly to each other. And we're required to respect every citizen. As teachers, you're change agents. You have the opportunity to create, promote, and foster change in the next generation. You're molding the future community, the larger community. Teachers represent an army of change agents. You have tremendous privilege because of your position as an educator, but you also have tremendous responsibility to carry the knowledge that you have and transmit it to the youth so that they take that as adults and implement it, remembering the stories that they've been told and understand in the classroom because those memories will etch with them and they will guide them. You're required to know and understand it so that you have an opportunity to, in effect, transmit it as a lifelong learner to future generations when you have the opportunity. 